Welcome back to Vampire. We're going to continue the main quest in just a couple minutes by heading to Doris Fletcher's acting theater. I think they might be the source of the plague in the West End. But before that, taking a quick stop at Lady Ashbury's place. And just a kind of random thought that came up when I was loading into this and it said Ashbury's Mansion. I was just looking at that name, Ashbury. It feels weirdly appropriate for a vampire, doesn't it? Ash and berry, like the concept of being burned into ashes. Vampires are kind of sort of turned into ashes by the sunlight, although we know it can't ultimately kill them. And of course, the concept of burying the dead, appropriate for vampires, sort of in a funny way, plus the plague and mass graves and all that. I don't know. I don't know if that was intended, but it just came to mind. Also, another random thought that sprung from that is I found it kind of funny that I pronounce berry like berry as in like I'm going to eat a berry or I'm going to bury the body I pronounce it the same way berry 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 I've heard some other people pronounce it bury which is like definitely more accurate because then it differentiates it from berry berry bury berry bury but I always say berry accents are fun good evening Jonathan how are you? I'm still investigating from inside the Ascalon Club. Can we talk? Of course, my dear. Can you tell me why your eyes aren't all bloodshot and weird? There are many paintings adorning the walls here. Yes? Did you paint them? No, my dear. But some of them. I have had a long time to learn from the best. I'm currently working on what could be my greatest masterpiece. What is this masterpiece? Your portrait, my dear Jonathan. It will be my gift to you, if I ever have time to finish it. Have you met any famous painters? Are you trying to divine my age by cross-checking historical dates, my dear? <laughs> That's a devious parlor trick. Well, Elizabeth, I tried my best. Don't I deserve some reward, at least? Well, if you must know, I even posed for the greats. Now that you know it, you may recognize me when visiting museums. I have investigated new sources of infection, and I may have found a new type of scowl. One suffering from heavy mutations that is extremely contagious. Scowls come in various forms, you know. They are simply degenerate versions of their makers. I believe these families are different, and I'm currently pursuing a lead. I know I can find the true source of contagion by finding who created these creatures. That would be great news. Be very careful, my dear, when dealing with such creatures. How is your investigation going? I have decided to explore beyond the dictates of reason. What do you mean? You may on occasion find this house closed when you visit me. If so, it is because I have gone undercover. Sort of. Hmm? Who are you going to surveil? I hope you're not considering spying on McCullum or the guard of Prewan. No. I intend to ask a few questions in parts of town I rarely venture into. Dirty places where a delicate lady like myself should never be seen. When will you return? As soon as possible. And I don't intend to stay away for long. Goodbye, my dearest. Goodbye, my beloved. Yeah, so we're just like full on part uh, girlfriend boyfriend, I guess. I feel like we kind of got there really, really fast. I mean, they basically just professed their love for me like a day or two ago, and then we've barely spoken. Actually, no, we haven't. We haven't spoken at all until just now. But okay, I guess I guess we're together. Blood Knight Tragedy. Only a few of us remain after the shock of the Great Hunt. I was one of them. I remember how the sudden attack of the enemy caught us all by surprise. Blood was shed during those few nights. Some of us who survived chose to exile. I don't blame them. But I regret their lack of fortitude, for it is courage we need to protect the interests of the Empire. Courage we need to defend the values we stand for. 
May we all remember that William Marshall himself never lowered his head. My beloved maker may be long gone now, but his presence is still among us. We keep a few drops of his sacred blood to remind us what we are and what we seek. Honor, purity, and excellence. I had the privilege of speaking with the knight many times, as his progeny and as his friend. He spoke to me of the tear of angels, the holy beverage supposed to appease the indistinguishable hunger we all feel, that he never ceased to search even without knowing if such artifact exists. I admire his tenacity, and it is this tenacity, this indefectible belief in something bigger than us that will make us survive any future great hunt launched by our enemies. Ascalon will be rebuilt always, for it is an ideal. From the Law of Ascalon by Lord Redgrave, Founder. Oh yeah, and I remember I've mentioned the dragon thing a couple times, so I think this is the note that we got really, really early on in the game that mentions the dragon thing. Yeah, the key parts are this. I also would like to remind our fellow members that the Brotherhood itself is ancient enough to have some mysterious traditions. One of them, according to some informants, could be the ritual of the so-called Ban of the Dragon. Seems that in certain conditions, when the Brothers of St. Paul find a violent or bloodthirsty immortal, they call upon him this ban. Um, this is a lesson we must all remember. Never be considered a dragon by the Brotherhood. Remember, I was thinking of that partially because of the name Ascalon was the name of the thing used to kill a dragon. All right, acting studio should be just right up here. Red? It's locked. Okay. Now where to teleport to? Is there a back entrance or something? Let's uh, get rid of this side quest so that's out of the way. Yeah, there could be a lot of entrances to it, actually. Hmm. Well, let's kill this holy knight. <laughs> I love when they just pop. Oh, it's so disgusting. But also weirdly amusing. Hi there. God, they're so low level. Yeah, I bet there's an entrance somewhere in this alleyway or back here. Probably somewhere to teleport up to or something. Those are suspicious looking. I've been I've been here before, yeah, I remember fighting some guards of Prewin down there. What the hell is that? I think it's one of the throwing up monsters. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! I needed to come here There's for the journal! There's an open window on the second floor. I should be able to get in through that. Yeah, I was coming here to find the journal for Usher Talltree, and I said I should come back later, so I guess these two quests are linked? I cannot enter. Oh, that's not the open window. Ah! Train! Oh, I so rarely see it. instantly hear a scream as soon as I enter. Well, since I'm looking for the journal... Actually, hmm, the journal's probably in the door down below, right? So this might be like an entirely different thing from the journal. It might be, but anyway, let's just activate the quest, nonetheless. Suicide note. I can't stand the pain anymore. It's like my entire body is breaking apart since that bitch infected me. For days now, she keeps hiding in her room, giving orders through little written notes, and only rehearsing at night. 
I witness one of her so-called rehearsals. She walks on stage, angry and hateful, spitting and whining about her fading beauty. The bitch is infected, rotten to the core, and she plans to infect everyone in this place. And then everyone in London. Her next play is not before December, and at this time, all the theater's employees will be her obedient minions, forced to serve her evil machinations. I'm sure she's found a way to corrupt our food or the water, since we all started to get ill and change after the meal she arranged for us last Monday. I want whoever finds this note to know that I only killed myself to escape the living hell that this place has become. May God have mercy on me and my immortal soul, since I refuse to be an accomplice to this devilry. So Doris Fletcher intentionally infected a bunch of people? How though? For in front of you stands the tall queen. Can that be Doris Fletcher's voice? Where does it come from? From the stage, I think. Oh. I like how they managed to make a noise, even though they literally were nothing but a smear on the ground. <laughs> how are those vocal cords working? Uh, do I want to go there yet? I guess, sure. That's weird, they're not showing up on my vampire vision, even though clearly they're right there. Alas, poor Doris. I knew her well. And many can testify to her kindness and beauty. For now she hides in shadow, ugly as sin. But when you burn and die, she will rise and be queen again. I love how you can hear that voice in the distance and it's all distorted, sounds like it's down a hall and really good at audio modeling. Old Doris Fletcher's Diary, London, 17th of August, 1918. I saw her in the flesh, the witch from my childhood nightmares, the bitch that tortured me for years. I saw her and I shivered, her voice, her face. I knew she was in that hospital. I knew she was sick, and I wanted to witness her suffering. I may have reinvented myself, become a famous actress, erased those wicked years from my memory. I can't forget I'm her daughter. When I saw her frail body in that small bed, suffering, sick, defeated, I had to hide my tears, for she was looking at me. She recognized me. She saw the hate in my eyes, and she smiled my pale corpse of a mother. And the worst thing was I felt no satisfaction seeing her in so much pain. The worst was not to suddenly remember the beatings and the abuses. No, the worst was to recognize the hate I felt in my heart when she looked at me. For it was the same hate I saw in hers. For in the end, I can't escape being her daughter. We are the same, my mother and I. No, you're not. Hating someone because they abused you is not the same as them hating you because they're an asshole and abusing you. It's such a cool place, isn't it? Like an old theater and that beautiful I don't know felt or whatever that like soft fuzzy wallpapery stuff just kind of peeling off and disappearing it's really cool looking 
red carpet covered in mud and grime and who knows what. So that's definitely the door to the theater, which is probably going to do the... I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be a boss fight or something. So let's look around here first. Level transition. Thankfully, I noticed it before anything happened. I guess that'll unlock the front door. Oh! Oh, oh, oh! Doris Fletcher, Sappho. I remember we saw a poster for that in the hospital a million years ago. Strong blood serum. Whoa. Strong blood serum. Someone else makes them? I thought it was just me. That's a weird find. It's locked, all right. Really just love the look of this place. It's very cool. Oh. Oh, that's where I'm supposed who to go. Are you? you who dared enter my realm. Are you here to worship or mock me? I'm here to put an end to the vampire epidemic, Miss Fletcher. Ah. But Doris Fletcher is no more. She was consumed by this putrid flesh that now enshrouds her. You feel anger for what happened to you. But I can help you. I'm a doctor, Miss Fletcher. Doris Fletcher is no more. All that remains are the dreams of the queen she was and the queen she'll be until then all shall die for that was her final wish you killed hold on for just a second so i can't see what's actually beneath the cloth they've got over themselves, but they have a really big growth on their left arm especially. It looks like it's gigantic. And it looks really similar to what happened to... Uh, can't remember her name, but the asshole from Pembroke Hospital that ended up down with old Bridget and the skulls. The one where we none of us understood what had happened to them. What was happening to them. It looks similar to that. They also had really enlarged limbs. My children, my beloved, die for the love of me. Okay, Shadow is the best against them. Shadow and guns. Whoa. On guard. Your hand is shaking. I smell your fear. Arise and save your queen, my slave. Damn, that does a lot of damage. Oh, behold, Kinsair, the disgrace of sheep. Oh, renowned. Will she be the queen again once they all shoot? That's not what I meant to do, actually. Whoa, oh, wow. Damn, that is creepy. Here and obey for your queen. Damn it. Stop eating me. Summon 
Remarkable saber I just got. Uh, wait. I beg you, wait. What? I... I don't want to die. And I did not come to kill you, Miss Fletcher. Will you spare me then? Save this cadaverous carcass of mine. Does your heart beat a little faster now? You fancy me then, Doctor? No, Miss Fletcher. My dead heart will beat for only one. Ah! Is she pretty? Is she sweet and tender? To me, yes. Ah! I hate her already. I know. And this is partly why you must be destroyed. But you just said... That I did not come here to kill you, yes. But I realize now, the threat you embody must be stopped. <gasps> Will I be remembered? Will you? You were Doris Fletcher. The greatest actress of her generation. No one can take that from you. Thank you. And farewell. Farewell. Dramatic. I love it. McCullum. How strange I seem to find you whenever I'm inquiring about that skull infestation. I mean you no harm. I'm not here for you. But once I put all the pieces of the puzzle together, I'm sure we'll have a little chat, you and me. Stay away from me, McCullum. You and all your war dogs. That I can't guarantee, Dr. Reed. But I'll let you go. For now. I should probably leave the theater right now. Yes. I cannot enter. The West End should be safe now. But London is not. It would be wise to benefit from the Ascalon's protection. While I continue my Wait. research during the Great Hunt. There's stuff. <clears throat> stuff that I missed. New Doris Fletcher's Diary. London, 24th of October, 1918. Soon I'll be on the stage again, for my rehearsals are almost over. My minions are gathered around me, ready to follow my every command. Soon my audience will return, ready to applaud my art. The young, the gorgeous, my healthy audience, who return to their families, their beautiful houses and happy lives, delighted by my performance, shocked by my disguise, touched by my grace, my infectious legacy. They'll spread the disease one by one, and they'll turn, and I'll be their beloved queen again, and they'll never forget me, and I shall have my revenge on the dirty trick fate played on me. Convenient time. These people want me dead. I need to leave now. Return at a more convenient time, yes. <laughs> that message played as soon as I left. And then the real message played. I wonder if there's going to be lots of guards on the streets. Guess we'll see. Before we continue, though, I've just been thinking about the, the pervading theme of the, the past little bit of the game, past couple episodes or so. There's been a really big theme of, like, women's vanity? Um, the person before this, the previous boss fight, uh, I don't remember their name, but they had become infected, and I think they were a student of Doris Fletcher. And they become infected and brutally murdered their entire family. Tortured at least one of them. Basically, I th think 
what happened there and what happened here is sort of a combination of the infection causing people to, I, I guess, sort of go insane, basically. Sort of um, makes any of their, their weaknesses, their, their worries, just made much more extreme to the point where they just kill people based on them and become obsessed with the ideas. Like, Doris obsessed with the idea that they're aging and they're not pretty anymore. That's going with the whole like, vanity theme. They're uh, an actor. You know, actors are, like, stereotypically very vain people. And then the other person, the previous boss fight, was an aspiring actor. Who, I think they, one of their messages that I think was from before, after they were infected. Talking about how their family, like, didn't appreciate their talent or something like that. Their talent for acting. So I think it's a combination of the infection heightening these these fears and these worries and these things that they don't like about themselves and about other people and kind of turning that into violence through the infection. But it's a very strong recent theme about women being vain, basically, and that makes me a bit uncomfortable. I, I wish they had chosen to explore the theme of what if you infect somebody and all of their tiniest worries and their tiniest grudges against somebody gets turned into extreme violence because now they're just an entirely different person and how do they act upon that? It's an interesting idea, but I just wish they explored it with different stories. Right, so lots of guards, people are gonna try so to- Doris just me. needed to be close to her audience to infect them. Contagion through skin. Very disturbing. Yeah, this almost certainly is what that person with old Bridget had, right? The, uh, let's call her the old woman. The old asshole woman from the hospital. Pretty sure that's what they had going on, too. Anyway, where am I actually going? I think I'm going the wrong way. Actually, no. Perfect. Let's head back to the Ascalon Club. Oh, before we head to the Ascalon Club, though, here's Louise Teasdale, who we never got to really have a proper conversation with. Good evening, Miss Teasdale. How have you been since you returned home? Dr. Reed. Oh, thank God you returned safely from these awful streets. I was so worried about my father that I left without thanking you properly. Please don't mention it, Miss. Good. I found him, you know. My dad. Or what was left of him. I think my abductor intended to do the same thing to me. Wait, you're so worried about your dad. But when I first talked with him, I told him that their dad was dead. Were they so worried about getting their dad's body? Because they said they were going to get him to give him a proper burial. I think maybe that dialogue was written for if you had not found her dad's body. Why did your father feel guilty? He seemed so eager to welcome you back, as though he'd done something wrong. Last time we saw each other, we had a terrible argument. I left the ass and ended up in a pub. That's where the vampire met me. Dead drunk. I see. We argued a lot, me and Dad. But he always came home. I'm sure that's why he went to find me. He knew something bad had happened. <laughs> he wanted... <laughs> he wanted proof that you were dead. What the fuck kind of a thing is that to say? Your father never gave up on you. In the end, he risked everything to save the daughter he loved. Yeah. That was my dad. Tough bastard, just like me. Even if I'd broken his leg, he would have gone looking for me. What do you mean? That last argument we had. It was more of a fight, actually. He slapped me and I kicked him hard in the balls. I mean, that's fair. So your father was an abusive asshole. Do you need my med- In the meantime, here's some medicine. I have no- I don't know if I want to talk to them about their father anymore. Louise, what can you tell me about the vampire who captured you? The little fucker claimed he'd fallen in love with me. That he wanted to spend eternity with me. Not a bad idea. At least that's the way it seemed at first. Really? Did you consider accepting his proposal? Well, immortality. Not a common wedding gift, is it? I think he just wanted to have his way with me. Can vampires even fuck, Doctor? <laughs> um, well, I, 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 I really can't answer that. I, I, 
Well, since they are creatures of blood, um, physically speaking, I suppose, an erection is possible, but I... Hmm. Don't be embarrassed, Dr. Reed. I was just asking. What do you do for a living, Miss Teasdale? Before my kidnapping, I was a waitress in a pub. Now I'm unemployed. Were you fired? No. It's just that after my recent experience, I don't feel like I can go back to my normal life. I need to do something useful. What do you intend to do? Dad always told me, Louise, if you want something, don't stop until you have it. I did my research and I found it. Ichabod Frogmorton, professional vampire hunter. No. I'll be his apprentice. Although that makes sense, they were kidnapped by a vampire, so yeah. That probably seems like a pretty attractive and interesting new line of work, but no. I'm a vampire. Please don't do that. Be very careful, Miss Teasdale. You are lucky to escape death once, but vampires lurk everywhere. You killed my kidnapper by yourself, didn't you? No offense, Doctor, but you're just a doctor. I don't see why I couldn't do the same. Yeah, about that. What can you tell me about this area? I've never really liked this part of town. It was where my father wanted to live. I won't remain here much longer. What exactly don't you like about it? People here are contemptuous and elitist. My dad always said, Louise, always treat people like you want them to treat you. Goodbye, Miss Teasdale. And be careful. Until we meet again. Why can't I forgive you, Father? Strangers come into your house. So we need to go talk to Lord Redgrave. I was just about to walk in here and I just noticed this person with orange hair. That can't be Lady Ashbury, can it? No, that definitely is. This can't be part of their undercover thing, can it? I mean, surely Lord Redgrave would recognize them. They delivered a message to them. Right. Elizabeth, what are you doing here? I've been formally asked to witness your triumph, my dear. After all, isn't it the natural role of a woman to support her man in victory? But it's you who insisted I join the Ascalon. Please forgive my giddiness. I'm just overcome by the thrill of finally being allowed within these hallowed halls. You certainly have an inquisitive mind. It's quite something. Elizabeth Ashbury, only you can make me smile in these difficult times. And the same to you, Jonathan Reed. Now go have your little chat with the chairman. I can see he's practically bursting to hear your report. So, yeah, not undercover. What are you writing, though? They're drawing. Lord Redgrave can play with the brave all he wants, but I won't put a foot outside until the pre I actually assumed that person down there was Lord Redgrave. I don't know, all these pale dudes look the same. Welcome back to the Ascalon Club, Lance Bearer. Please, tell us the good news. Have you put an end to the epidemic? My hypothesis was correct. Doris Fletcher was the source of the contagion in this part of town. She was probably the first to be infected. And you cleansed her before the hunters, I've been told. Well done, Dr. Reed. You thrust your lance and pierced the very heart of the corruption. But some questions remain. The important thing is, we won a major battle for the survival of London. For that, we salute you. Thank you, my lord. Now, I have another task for you. One of the utmost importance. Perhaps even more so than the previous. I'm listening. It's time for you to perform a most sacred duty for the club. I want you to recruit a new vampire. Recruit a new vampire? Are you sending me on some sort of diplomatic mission? Not exactly. I want you to make Aloysius Dawson the Econ he deserves to be. I don't want to make that... I don't want to bestow upon that old shit immortality. Let the fucker die. Please.
But I can't really say no, can I? Hmm. Unless this is a test. Could this be a test? Fuck you, I'm not doing it. I'm sorry, but I can't. Are you questioning my orders? No. It's just... I'm not sure I'm ready to have another progeny after what happened with my sister. The rebirth of Aloysius Dawson is a necessary step in our campaign to ensure the safety of London. How would you like me to proceed? Aloysius is waiting for you at the Dawson estate. Once the deed is done, I'll join you there to celebrate this momentous occasion. Okay, guess it wasn't a test. Before I go, I have a few questions. All right, I'm listening. You invited Lady Ashbury. Wouldn't that be breaking one of your cardinal rules? No women allowed. Not allowed as members, no. But considering the circumstances, I thought you'd like to have her here to witness your triumph. So it's a temporary admittance, then. Something of a bargain, considering the crisis we're currently facing. I'm very suspicious why they want Lady Ashbury so close. I feel like they're going to do something with that. Like, I don't know, hold her hostage, or... Do you think there'll be a betrayal? Lady Ashbury was part of the Ascalon Club all along. Goodbye, Lord Redgrave. Oh. Wait. Wait, was that it? I swear I didn't press the yes, go ahead button, but may maybe I did? I'm not sure. Nothing more to talk with him about anyway. Are you alright, Jonathan? Lord Redgrave has just ordered me to turn Aloysius Dawson. To make him my progeny. I see. And how do you feel about this? Hmm. I'd like your advice on the matter. The real question here is, why has his lordship given you this task? Do you think it's some sort of trap? Do you really want to know what I think about this? I do, yes. To make an immortal of a soulless blackguard like Aloysius Dawson will only lead to a disaster for London. The man is already dead inside. Should I refuse? Perhaps politely suggest that Lord Redgrave turn the man into a vampire himself. Don't you dare, my dear. According to what I've recently discovered, his lordship could kill you for even broaching the subject. Really? Why? I've recently found proof that the Earl of Bristol is of lesser lineage and only capable of creating skulls. The Earl of Bristol? Is Lord Redgrave the Earl of Bristol? They can only make skulls? If so... Interesting. Please, tell me more about your recent investigation. As long as you lower your voice. Are you sure your information about Redgrave is correct? He says he's the progeny of the great knight, William Marshall, who lived some nine centuries ago. That's a lie. Lord Redgrave is unable to create anything but skulls, <laughs> if the poor soul survive at all. Oh, that's such a juicy little fact. How can you be sure the information was correct? I made the acquaintance of a most interesting informer while investigating your maker from whom I learned the truth about Lord Redgrave. What would happen if I made Dawson an Ekon like myself? You would add a powerful immortal into a suffering world. An immortal who already craves authority. Maybe I could teach him control, like you taught me. Lead him down the right path. Mr. Dawson spent his life searching for a way to cheat death. I'm sure he has spent decades dreaming of how he'd spend eternity as a tyrant. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. Oh, did you did, did you just see that? Lady Ashbury just looked straight at the camera for like five seconds. It made me very uncomfortable. I feel like some serious fourth wall breaking just happened. Why did you look at me? That genuinely creeped me out. So weird. Maybe like another- oh, There it again! D stop! Is there someone there? Is there like a character walking by? 
No. No, there isn't. I don't like it. What would you have me do about Dawson? The man is dangerous. Did you know he plans to build a wall to separate the healthy rich from the sickly poor? Do not make him your progeny. What would you do? The man's dying already. Let the reaper harvest the rotten fruit that is his soul. Stop looking at the camera. <laughs> okay, so make sure that they conveniently die of natural causes before. Right. How do I do that? I don't know, but sounds like a plan. Sort of. Goodbye for now, Elizabeth. Goodbye, my dear. Please be careful. There's there's no way that Lady Ashbury is just like someone undercover who's, you know, the twist is that they're actually not on my side. I mean, there's no way. No, they've demonstrated their trustworthiness too much at this point. They're definitely trustworthy. It looks like vampires have to obey Mendel's laws when producing progeny. Powers pass from one generation to another. That's why Dawson wants me to sire him. Well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when we return, we're going to continue the main quest and reach the temple church entrance. 